Hi everyone. Um, so originally our team was named the Cycle Cam, but we've rebranded to the name Otter at, for the acronym Our Decision Our Responsible, and we'll expand more on that later. Um, but our team is interdisciplinary um, with computer science, environmental science, and business majors. So throughout the quarter, we had mentorship from Craig Dudenhofer from Sustainable Ocean Alliance and sponsored Chris Ripley from Smarter Sorting. And over the course of the um, quarter, we conducted 47 interviews, half with industry professionals and half with potential users. Um, we originally joined this class to work towards a solution to the problem of plastic pollution in our ocean and learn lean startup design. Um, and our project was really inspired by the shocking statistic that 70% of waste is able to be recycled yet less than 10% actually is. So next slide, Chris. Yeah, so our original design was we would have a phone with a camera app that would uh, judge how much contamination was in whatever uh, waste it was looking at. Uh, and it was intended to be used by uh, just everyday household users. Um, we immediately through interviews found problems with this, which was we found there was a lot of friction with getting people to actually take their phone out and like take a picture of their trash for any reason. Um, we had trouble finding incentives for people to uh, use this app because uh, people probably wouldn't use it if they didn't have some tangible benefit that they could get out of it. And uh, at the end of the day, this was just like a way of educating uh, our users and there were probably better ways of educating people about waste contamination than uh, a phone app. Um, so next slide. So other solutions that we looked at, uh, we just started brainstorming with our mentors and interviewees. Uh, we looked at a way of optimizing pickup routes for uh, trash um, pickup bins so that they wouldn't have to spend time like getting barely full trash bins. They could save money with that and uh, that could maybe get to the users if we could somehow get them to work together. Um, another problem, we could we could go directly to the material uh, recovery facility, MRF, and see if there were um, technological solutions we could explore there uh, to combat waste contamination. But So yeah, not too far into, <clears throat> into the beginning of the class here, um, we had a, a sobering realization, and it came from our mentor, where Craig basically told us, um, you know, he, he asked us, you know, are, are you really a problem looking for a solution? And uh, a solution looking for a problem. And, and that kind of helped us direct, direct us a little bit. Um, and we, we realized that we were very married to the idea of having imaging technology on a, on a smartphone app. So this uh, helped us kind of open up a little bit and go look, for the, uh, go look into the problem itself um, and then, and then try, to, try to learn more that way. Around this time as well is when we, we, start, we had an interview with Peter and uh, one thing he highlighted is, is that really the people willing to pay for uh, these sustainable solutions, especially with waste, um, you know, that power doesn't necessarily lie with the material resource facilities or the municipal organizations, that it's really up to the corporations um, that, that are putting in, out there all this material that, that we just cannot process or, or recycle. Um, so that, that was one um, good follow-up that we were able to kind of expand our, our view and then follow the money in a way that led us to look at corporations in a different way. And, and also received, um, validating that we needed to, in order to enact change that would come from the, from the brands themselves. We can go on to the next slide. And that, that led us on a little bit to, to talk, uh, so to find that the producers are the ones who have the most leverage. And, and in this time, we, were, we had um, gone into a problem deep dive, researched the entire industry of recycling, and found out that in reality, it, it seemed like recycling was pushed on by us, by, by these companies, to believe that, this was, that, that we were doing a good service and continuing to consume their products. Um, so then that made us realize that, you know, the, the, consumer, the producers ultimately had the most leverage over the problem and we were looking into ways to maybe fix that. And then with a third and additional um, interview that we had with Kristen Lee, who's the zero waste program manager at UC Santa Cruz, we were, we were tipped off the edge. These three clues, we got them together and uh, we started to look at things from a procurement standpoint. If we really want to affect change, maybe it's not in the recycling space. So we went back to the drawing board. And here came a lot of ideas. So yeah, like you just said, we got to thinking again. From, if we want to make the change coming from the procurement standpoint. So if we were able to prevent harmful materials from being bought in the first place, there wouldn't be as much to clean up, obviously. So this brought us to the concept of pre-cycling, meaning that facilities in different zip codes have different recycling capabilities. 
So if we could inform users on what can be recycled within their community at the point of purchase, we could divert more waste away from the landfills themselves. So that began to feel like a turning point for us. You know, after our interviews, uh, especially with Kristen as well, we, we, we heard about this idea of sustainable procurement and that idea of, of pre-cycling. And, we, and <laughs> I remember at some point I had brought up an idea of just, you know, what if it's like a green Amazon? And at first, you know, this idea was laughed, uh, laughed off. Uh, it just seemed very grandiose. But, um, but there, was a, there was a thing in there that we used uh, later on and, and that, that kind of connected those dots for us. Yeah, um, if I remember, I think it was right after the Kristen Lee interview and uh, Chris was calling us, he's like, you know, hey, hey guys, what, what if we just made a, a green Amazon, dude? <laughs> You're just laughing at him. <laughs> he's like, wow, there's no way we're gonna outcompete them. But um, wait a couple of days, I have another idea. So those two ideas, we, we didn't, you know, by themselves, they weren't anything useful. But when we combined the two, um, we knew that we had something. So we thought with the web plugin, you can do both these things. Oh, so, so um, now we just, so now we just needed to find a simple way of con like converting Amazon into a green Amazon. So we started approaching our interviews uh, with people with uh, sustainable products to figure out the best way to have the market. Hold on, I'm sorry guys. Um, I was gonna say something here, I forgot to say it. Um, what I was gonna say was that uh, with the plugin, if we can't make a green Amazon, we were planning on making Amazon greener. So um, mm -hmm. that's what I want now. But, um, so afterwards, uh, we wanted to validate the, our hypothesis that something like this could work. And uh, we wanted to, you know, we asked pointed questions to see, you know, how could we help you um, biomaterials companies get back into the market, uh, break the market. And um, we asked these questions because we were interested in seeing how we could, uh, a plugin could potentially promote a product like this. And so every interview we had, we were more, sh more and more sure that uh, a plugin like this was needed. And um, this, this quote here from G uh, Jenny um, showed us that um, this, what our plugin could do was um, needed. <laughs> Yeah, so Jenny also told us that the key barrier that prevents more bio products from entering the market was that they cause more per unit, and that manufacturers would have to replace all of their machinery to be able to process and otherwise you know, handle them. But at scale, the price discrepancy between bio and traditional products can actually be reduced then. We also conducted a survey for potential users because we wanted to see if they had a problem finding sustainable products and if they would use our solution. And the two graphs on the right shows that the majority of our respondents either have an extension installed on the browser or would be willing to use one. And also the majority either already spent some time looking into the environmental impact of a product or they would be willing to spend some time doing so. And our survey also asked if respondents what they had considered in their most recent online purchase. And 41% said they consider if the product is safe for the environment. And from these results, we are confident with our solution. So it was, it was great news. Uh, industry says they need something like this. Consumers are interested. Um, and so we drafted up uh, a little MVP here. Um, we'll be showing you that in, in the video. So how many interviews have you done? Maybe you could double down and try to do 15. <laughs> no, absolutely, yeah. So, so I think for next week, you know, just go for it. Just go for it, just be opinionated. Uh, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, just be like engineers who think you're right. Okay, and go talk to as many people as you can.
So this is Otter, a web browser extension that rates products across a number of sustainability metrics and recommends cross-platform sustainable alternatives. If we're looking at running shorts on REI.com, we can see that our extension has given us three alternatives taking into account metrics such as carbon footprint and fair trade. With a click, you'll be led to a more sustainable purchase today. And in turn, we rewarded brands for being responsible. So here's how it works. We rate by aggregating context-based certifications, labels, and sustainability audits, displaying ratings in four key fields identified as most important to our target market. Those being responsible water resource management, product material recyclability, fair trade and labor practices, and GHG compliance. Next, we show cross-platform product recommendations with revenue from affiliate links and advertisements. We're connecting shoppers to the sustainable products they seek and driving demand for sustainable brands. Actionable links allow consumers to have their voices heard. User analytics and community features gamify our application. With every sustainable purchase, users earn credits towards savings and prizes from our partners.